Please be seated. Last evening, I had the occasion to uh, take a walk over to St. Margaret's in Belfast to attend one of their international dinners that they have from time to time. And it's always on a theme, and it's a fun evening. And on my way, I could, couldn't help but just take in the sounds all around me, the late summer crickets and the grasshoppers and the birds beginning to nestle in the trees for the night. I went, took a little shortcut through a section that is pretty wooded and suddenly some wings, the sound of wings passed by me and took me by surprise. I couldn't help but think of the man from the gospel this morning and of Jesus' words, Afatha, be opened. We all know what loss of one's hearing can do. It brings isolation. In this gospel reading, the man is given back his community. For in Jesus' day, people with impediments were often ostracized, thinking that they had somehow committed some serious sin in the past. And so Jesus restores this man's hearing and in fact restores him to life. And so it is that we are partners in that same work together. Restoration, rebuilding, being the people of God in this world. At the next service, we'll be having a baptism of a one-year-old child, a relatively new family to the parish. It is a way for us to once again also renew our own baptismal promises. As I mentioned in my note in tidings this past week that Christians were known as people of the way. At least that's how others described followers of Christ in those early years, and really how early Christians saw themselves. People of the way, just think about it. It indicates a journey towards something rather than arriving at the destination. A suggestion of how things might be rather than that rigid sense of this is how they must be. The way beckons us onwards, revealing broad vistas before us on each new rise. As time passed and the desire for security and certainty prevailed, the church came to look less like a way and more like an institution. With the official recognition of Christianity as the state religion in the fourth century, the church gained strength and stability and a respite from persecution. But a vital spark was lost as the desire to move and explore was gradually stifled by a preference for simply staying put. The artist David Hockney said of creativity, if you're not moving in a way, you're dead. And that goes for us as we seek our own place on the way of Christ. If once we cease moving and exploring, we will have lost our grasp on the fullness of life that should be ours. We shall find that we no longer run to the top of the nearest hillside to gaze with excitement at the horizons beyond, but rather find ourselves just content to linger in the valley. 
on the move as God's people, we discover not just new sights and new encounters, but also our very identity. The Israelites in their escape from slavery in Egypt discovered God on the way, moving before them as a cloud by day and a fire by night. Only through undertaking this risky journey into the unknown did they encounter God on the road. The ark symbolizing for them the presence of God who had pitched his tent alongside theirs. For God was a nomad too. Jesus kept on the move throughout his ministry, teaching those who followed that the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. And so this is a demanding road on which we walk. We can only travel along it because Jesus has gone ahead, marking the route before us. Like day hikers who are perhaps confused or lost their markers on the way, we we can look for and find enormous relief as we spy that fresh imprint of a boot on the path that we follow. The journey of the baptismal life requires a proper um, map. Do you remember what maps were? Have you seen a map lately? I cleaned out my car the other day and I meant to bring one in. I had forgotten how dog-eared they get and how you can never quite get them back together in the same way. They used to give them out at gas stations when you went to get gas. Using a map rather than a satellite navigation. Part of this Christian journey is that we have to be fully engaged in our map work. Mapping the route, finding the path. There's no automatic system to do it for us. And rarely is our path straight. We shall need to check frequently our navigation points, ranging from the scriptures, the tradition of the church, to just plain common sense, to make sure that we are on the right track. As people of the way, we hone our skills in navigating our way through life. This we do through our daily prayer, our reading of scriptures, and are learning just to be still. We have huge resources at our disposal and the whole breadth and variety of Christian experience to draw on throughout history and across the world. Throughout our journeying, we remind ourselves that we won't be doing this alone. In fact, we aren't allowed to. This Christian journey is a group exercise a shared venture. We can find ourselves caught up in the wonderful company of fellow travelers streaming along the road with us, a ragtag collection of all sorts of citizens, of sorts of people, sizes and colors, all heading the same way, glad of one another's company and appreciate the different gifts everyone brings to the party. Together, we are ready for anything. The poet William Blake once said, I walked the other evening to the end of the earth and touched the sky with my finger. We too are enabled to do just that when we, the community of the baptized, assemble every Sunday, not just to talk or to listen or pray, but to actually touch holy things and in so doing to realize that we ourselves are the holy, beloved children of God, a little lower than the angels, crowned with glory and honor. Yes, that really does refer to you and to me, transformed by our life together in the assembly of faith. In our journey as disciples of Jesus, there will be moments of danger, 
fear, or discouragement. We may turn aside for a moment or even begin to turn back, but when we waver, we remember that we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, the glorious company who walk alongside us now and those who have gone before us. Above all, we look to the one who has trodden this path before us, marking the way. Jesus has not sent us into the unknown, but onto a path he has pioneered for us. He taught us much by his words and deeds, but above all by his going the distance to his own great cost, that he made everything possible for you and me to follow him. The disciples of Jesus, our journey is not an optional extra for those who just enjoy travel, sightseeing, but rather is a movement inseparable from our identity. This journey itself, of course, is a process. It's a process of discovery and transformation a process by which we appropriate the patterns of belief and prayer and behavior that give structure to our Christian life. Journey, in a sense, really does define us. It's what we do, for we are none other than people of the way. <laughs>